Hey, I'm Sean, and we're in the San Pedro market here in Cusco, Peru. And in this episode of Window Seat, we're taking you through some of the coolest markets in the entire world. Markets are one of our favorite ways to get a flavor for local life around the world. They give a great taste of an area. So we hope these help whet your travel appetite. We start with a couple of the biggest and most popular markets in the world, Istanbul's Grand Bazaar and Spice Market. The Grand Bazaar has brought in millions of shoppers for hundreds of years. In fact, get this, almost 40 million people visited this market in 2022 alone. With 61 covered streets filled with vendors, it can be a bit to navigate, but a must visit in Istanbul. As is the Istanbul Spice Market, also known as the New Bazaar or Egyptian Bazaar. Talk about history. This place was built in 1664, more than 350 years ago. It boasts 85 shops full of sweets, fruits, jewelry, and of course, spices. Chicken This morning. It's a Turkish delight for the senses and makes Istanbul a market heaven. Coming back to the United States, we have Pike's Place Market in Seattle, well known for the fresh fish. It is one of the U.S.'s oldest farmers markets at more than 100 years old. But this is more than just a fishy place. More than 10 million people a year enjoy the 500 plus businesses in the market and a great stop in the Pacific Northwest. Speaking of fish, the Central Fish Market in Jeddah is a must see when in Saudi Arabia. You may not think fish when you think of this oil-driven country. The people from inside, from inside the sea, they bring all the fishes, the fishermen, yep. and they do an auction, and everyone will buy. But this 100-plus stall market has been the beating heart of Jeddah for centuries and was huge in the city's development. And this one, we call it Harid, and this is the season for Harid. It started yesterday. It's like the parrot fish. It's really nice uh, bait. These might be some of the prettiest fish we've ever seen. A rainbow of colors, all caught fresh in the Red Sea when we visited last spring. Yes. Uh, why it's colorful? Because of the coral and uh, the Red Sea. We got to see the inner workings of the place as they prepped the fresh catches for buyers. It wasn't always a pretty sight, but the finished product is unforgettable. Staying in the Middle East, the souks of Dubai are a must-see. Souk is the experience, not what you get from it. You get in and out of it what you put into it. There are a number of different types of souks throughout this popular Arab tourist destination. Can you smell this? Smell, smell it. it. From spices to gold to textiles to perfume, you can find pretty much anything your exploring heart desires or something nice for friends back home. So I just spent about 250 bucks on uh, tea, I think, and some other little things. But here's the thing to remember. This souk and others like it all over the world are filled with knockoff purses and copycat watches. You know, looking for some watches or some knockoff purses. You know, the kind of thing you gotta do when you go somewhere and they have these markets like these. Shopkeepers will do anything to talk you out of your money. Which color you like? Um, I'm really after more of a blue. But remember, this stuff isn't as valuable as the real thing. And there's always room for negotiation. That is, if your ethics allow you to buy counterfeit goods in the first place. Over in Da Nang, Vietnam, the Khan Market is a local favorite. Now, the Han Market may draw the tourists, and it's great too, but we want to go where the locals do. And when in this beautiful Vietnamese oceanside city, that means the easily walkable and character-filled Khan Market. Staying in Vietnam, the floating markets of the Mekong Delta are must-see. The Kai Bi floating market is one of the most popular of the options. For good reason. It feels like a trip back in time. It's the largest floating market on the Mekong Delta, and you get the unique feeling of this different kind of market while seeing its importance in the local economy, with four to 500 daily boats filled with fruits, veggies, and other products. We launched our drone over the muddy waters of the Mekong to show you the scale and volume of this floating market. We've never seen anything quite like it, and it's an absolute must if you're headed to this part of the world. Now crossing over the border to Thailand, 
The Chatuchak market in Bangkok is something special. More than 15,000 stalls and more than 11,000 vendors covering more than 35 acres. This weekend only market brings everyone out. More than 200,000 people come to take part each weekend, making it the world's largest weekend market. And much like Bangkok, be sure to check it out at night. That's when it really comes alive. Tangier has a number of reasons to visit, but its market should be among the reasons you want to stop by. Loaded with textiles. So is this okay. unique to Morocco? Is this? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And delicious fresh produce among many other options. Yeah, yeah I think all uh, together. You can get a true taste of Morocco while geographically scratching the country's surface. Our guide said you can't really go wrong with whatever you eat, so we got the mixed bag and we're going to tear into these here in just a little bit. And if you want to capture the essence of this historic and amazing city on Instagram, few places are as photogenic as this. Just across the Mediterranean, if you desire a more European vibe, Mercado de la Boqueria in Barcelona has to be on your list. Located centrally in the city, this market has all the fare you want and more, with more than 300 stalls, including the famous Spanish tapas. All the best tapas chefs buy from there anyways. Take the venture down La Ramba and wander into La Bocaria. If the cool architecture doesn't draw you, that Catalonian cuisine should. On the South American continent, the San Pedro Market in Cusco is a great spot for people taking in the town on their way to Machu Picchu. If you've ever been to one of those meat markets anywhere in the world, whether that's Asia or even Europe or America, it's got that very distinct meat smell all throughout. It probably takes away from some of the ambiance, but it definitely makes you feel like you're in a market. It's huge and has everything all under one roof. Like one of the reasons there's the expression, what are you in the market for? Because there's everything available. From produce and meats for locals to delicious food and juice stands and souvenirs, the place has it all, all under one big roof. It's like uh, one of the great sort of bazaars of the world. A must stop to fill your tank of Peruvian flavor when in Cusco. Viva el Peru. Now we couldn't leave without mentioning European Christmas markets. These are always worth seeing when visiting Europe in the winter. There are so many great ones all over the continent, each with their own seasonal flair. And we'll have our top Chris Kindle markets later this year. That's all we have for our favorite markets. There's so many great ones though. So we're sorry if we missed one of your favorites. Please leave it in the comments section below so we can check it out. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We're back here with a brand new adventure here on Window Seat next Friday. In the meantime, don't forget to check out these other videos from Window Seat.